This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. So, uh, one of the things that uh, I want to start talking a little bit about is uh, dolphins because that's kind of in the news. Uh, we got some dolphin stuff I want to get into. We got some uh, heat stuff also I want to get into. Uh, we'll talk some soccer later on with uh, Michelle Kaufman at 1.30. She's going to join us from the Miami Herald. So we'll get into a little inter-Miami. I am looking forward to uh, the interseason starting. And pretty soon you'll be able to hear something else that we'll be doing also with, uh, with Inter. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I, I, I said when Inter came to town, I was going to be a fan only. You know, I wasn't going to get involved because I've been involved with all the teams. But uh, we're involved, and we're involved in a big-time way. And uh, I'm actually – I'm really excited because it's something that uh, I – I know it's right on my alley, but it's, uh, it's, it's going to be an exciting project that we're going to be a part of. So I'm I'm looking forward to to that with uh, with the great folks at Inter Miami, man. It's going to be a lot of fun, especially for you soccer fans out there. You're we're going to build a home for you like you've never had before, and uh, that's going to be really really cool. And it's not going to be local. It's not just going to be national. It's going to be also international, and uh, that's that's going to be a, a lot of fun. What do we got here? Uh, NorCal says breaking news. Perfect wake and bake weather out in Cali. Streaming big old radio show from the foothills. Like and share chat borders. There we go. I like it. Like, share, subscribe. Do all of that while you're watching, folks. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share. That's the most important thing you do is share the link of the show with people, whether it's the iTunes link, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, however you watch and support our show. Share the link with a friend. All right, so let me get into a little Ryan Fitzpatrick because we always love talking about Ryan Fitzpatrick. And Ryan did uh, the interview yesterday, and obviously his hair and his beard were making headlines all over. Everybody was loving his beard and his and his hair and all that stuff. And, and it is glorious. I, I will give it to him. There's no doubt about it. So he was asked about working with the quarterbacks. And I want you to hear this soundbite, okay? Go ahead, Bill. Fire off Ryan Fitzpatrick talking about working with the young quarterbacks. Excited for him to be here. Um, I love watching him play in college, and uh, I think he's I think he's going to be an awesome addition to the team for a long time. I'm as competitive as they come, so I want to go out there and start. I know that... In order for our team to be successful, whoever's playing in that quarterback room has to be successful. So whether that's me out there or whether that's somebody else, you know, be it two of us, I'm going to do the best I can uh, uh, to help him to make sure that our position is doing the things to make our team win. Now, I love that entire soundbite. He says all the right things like he normally does. He's got the perfect attitude like he normally does. Uh, he's looking glorious with that hair and that beard like he normally does. But the one thing that stood out to me in that soundbite is, you know, whether it be Tua out there, and he should have said whether it be Tua or Josh out there or Josh or Tua, he should have mentioned both guys. I felt so bad for Josh Rosen because, and look, he's kind of brought it on himself you know, he's got to do his part to shine. He's got – see, one of the things that always pisses me off about the way we treat quarterbacks sometimes is we expect everything to be perfect for them. And if it's not perfect for them, then you can't expect them to be productive. You can't expect them to make things happen, and that's not true. Now, if they don't have the right people around them, they're going to struggle. They're going to have some bad moments. They're not going to achieve their pinnacle. But throughout it all, you're going to see your moments that will convince you, like, okay, he's the guy. And I remember the 
We used to do it with Ryan Tannehill all the time, too. Well, no, you know, his line is not Well, you know, he doesn't have the right receivers. Well, you know, uh, you change his offensive coordinator. And, and yet he never raised the level of play of anybody around him. And Rosen did not do that. And I understand that he had a disastrous year in Arizona. And they didn't teach him anything there. And then here they tried to teach him as much as they could. And he had some moments... And there were moments also where the players around him failed and they dropped balls. I remember that early. But he just didn't do enough to elevate. And then he did enough to tell you you're not the guy yet because he made mistakes. And in chaos, you got to try to rise above it if you're a quarterback. You're not going to be able to always rise above it because it's really difficult. But you've got to rise above it sometimes. You've got to make some plays sometimes. There are moments where you have to show that you are the difference in the play. And that's what you saw in Ryan Fitzpatrick last year. In chaos, while lines were breaking down, while running game wasn't working, while players were inconsistent, he found a way to make a play or two every once in a while. And and that's what you saw different in him than you saw in Josh Rosen. Then you saw in Ryan Tannehill. Then you saw in Cleo Lemon. Then you saw in whatever guy that you've had here forever. Okay? Most of the guys that you've had here, when there's chaos, when there's whatever, they're just not the guy. So they fold because they can't raise everybody above them. And so Rosen has kind of earned this on his own. And the kid can pass. You can see it that he has it. But he has to find that bridge of overcoming the connection of what's going on in front of him, the play that's designed, and then he's got to find a middle ground when, when chaos breaks. And he can't. And that's the magic of Russell Wilson. And that's the magic of Pat Mahomes. And that's the magic of Tom Brady. And that's the ma- what the, my point is, that's the magic of Deshaun Watson. When you're a good quarterback, you find a way to make plays. You're not going to make them all the time because nobody does. But you got to do it moments that you're going to convince us you're the guy. And then when you hear Fitz's soundbite and he mentions Tua, look, you and I know they drafted Tua because he's the guy. 